Siphonophores, belonging to the class Hydrozoa and Phylum Cnidaria, are complex carnivorous colonial animals that are relatives to corals, jellyfish, and anemones. Currently, there are around 188 known species, according to the World Register of Marine Species. Most well known is the Portuguese man o' war, a large and colorful siphonophore with a sail to propel it with the wind. Though these live on the surface, the vast majority of siphonophores are active swimmers in the water columns of the open ocean. Siphonophores are colonial organisms, and just like how corals are made of polyps, siphonophores are made up of many multicellular zooids, all strung together by a stolon or stem, which resembles an umbilical cord. Here you can see the stolon pretty clearly, and over here, each of these are zooids. All these parts are genetically identical, formed from the same embryo as siphonophores produce asexually. But unlike corals, each body is highly specialized to serve different functions, including eating, reproduction, and movement. In this screencast, I will cover the basic structure of siphonophores, including the functions of each part, go over the three recognized groups and the differences in structure between them, describe the unique features of some siphonophores, and finally, assess the effects of climate change on the organisms. Starting off with structure, this diagram of a basic physonex siphonophore includes the names of many different components which perform the functions for these colonial organisms to survive. At the very top of this image is the pneumatophore, which is a float unique to siphonophores. Each one comprises of a gas gland, a chitin-lined gas chamber, and a second cavity. The gland releases carbon monoxide into the cavity to act as a hydrostatic organ, allowing siphonophores to control their buoyancy. Back to the diagram, these nectophores are the medusae specific to movement. Also known as swimming bells, they contract in coordination, pumping and directing water backward to propel the entire colony through the water by jet propulsion. Together, the segment containing nectophores is called the nectosome. Here is a video of a physonex siphonophore up close. Again, this is the pneumatophore on the end, and each of these here are the separate nectophores, making up the nectosome. The rest of the siphonophore is a section termed as the siphosome, which is made up of the stem and zooid groups. So palpons are the zooids thought to be responsible for the excretory and defense roles of the siphonophore, each with the palpicle. There are also feeding polyps, or gastrozoids, with tentacles, which are typically present to capture, ingest, and digest prey. The siphonophores deploy these long tentacles with stinging nematocysts, and bring food to the mouth and stomach organs. Through the stolon, the food is able to nourish the entire colony. The siphonophore zooids in this video are pulling in a copepod to eat. Reproductive polyps, also known as gonophores, take care of reproduction for the organism. New colonies of siphonophores are produced sexually so gonozoids expel packaged sperm and eggs. The eggs in the open sea release a chemical which attracts the sperm, and the fertilized embryo can then begin budding zooids. What you see here are the reproductive polyps of a Pacific man o war. Not shown in the diagram, some siphonophores have bracts, which are present for other zooids to pull in between when the colony is startled. Finally, on the nectosomal and siphosomal growth zones, buds will form on these protrusions to produce new zooids. The picture is of a siphosomal growth zone up close. And here is another close-up of the siphosome of a siphonophore, including three of the different specialized zooids, nectophores, gastrozoids, and palpons. 
And in this final image, we have a physonex siphonophore. You can see the nematophore for buoyancy, the nectosome section for movement, and the siphosome, which includes the rest of the zooids and the stem. There are many different variations in the way these specialized zooids can be arranged to form an entire integrated organism, but most conform to three main types, physonectae, cystonectae, and calicophorae. So the basic structures we covered were a physonex siphonophores, but we can compare the other two, the cystonex and calicophorans, to them, as there are a couple of distinct differences. Physonex siphonophores are grouped based on the fact that they have a pneumatophore, nectosome, and siphosome. Image A depicts a typical long-stemmed physonect, while images C, D, and E show more atypical versions. In image C, the chormidia, or iterations of zooid patterns in the siphosome, are all gathered on a short siphosome. In D, the rings are large bracts from chormidia, also on a short siphosome. Finally, the siphonophore in image E has an enlarged pneumatophore and a ring of nectophores on a short nectosome. These all vary from one another, but they're all considered as physonex. In this simplified diagram, we can see that cystonex still do have a pneumatophore and a siphosome, but lack a nectosome section, or the section with swimming bells. Because nectophores are responsible for movement in siphonophores, the cystonex, which do not have them, usually drift peacefully, but can writhe if needed by contracting stem muscles. Without nectophores, the pneumatophores are essential in cystonex to lift the heavy stem and zooids. And you can see in this more illustrative diagram how much bigger the cystonect pneumatophore is compared to the physonect one. The Portuguese man o war is an atypical cystonect, but it has a classic enlarged pneumatophore with no stem and chromidia directly on the underside. The last grouping of the three a typical calicophorin has two nectosomes and a siphosome. Since calicophorins do not have a pneumatophore, or as you may recall, the float that allows siphonophores to control buoyancy, up to 75% of the heavy sulfate ions in calicophorins in each structure need to be replaced with lighter chloride ions to make up for the buoyancy. Images A through F all depict different variations of calicophorins. A, C, D, E, and F are all typical versions, each with two bells and a long siphosome. The two bells are angularly aligned in each of them, and in A, C, and G, the long tentacles extended for feeding are clearly visible, each bearing 80 to 90 nematocyst batteries. In summary of siphonophore grouping, here is a basic table categorizing which structures are present in each type, along with images of the typical versions of each, side to side. Nearly all siphonophores have bioluminescent characteristics. Luminescence usually serves as a defensive trait, but what's unique is that siphonophores also use bioluminescent lures to attract fish. In this same clip, you can see the long tentacles of the siphonophore's gastrozoids. As part of the Cnidaria family, siphonophores have nematocysts or specialized cells in the tentacles to capture prey and defend. Again, the Portuguese man o' war serves as a good example, as all the venomous tentacles are armed with thousands of stinging cells to pack a killer sting. In the end, siphonophores are absolutely fascinating organisms. It is unimaginable how they can grow even longer than the blue whale, the world's largest animal, and there is so much complexity between all the zooids integrated with one another. I have only briefly covered the basic structures, groupings, and features of these creatures, 
and there are so many more aspects of siphonophores to explore.